in India for several decades now, almost 75 years. He's been paying a, playing a very crucial role in India's aviation sector. It's become almost ubiquitous uh, uh, in the Indian skies. Uh, but it's really in the last four or five years where we've seen their business grow manifold. So many would say Boeing is in a historical sweet spot. Okay, there is, uh, you know, the transformation is underway, but there is a lot of work, a lot of potential uh, going forward. So what do we expect going forward? Well, that's, that's the job I have this evening, to put that question to Pratt and Jeanette. So thank you very much, both of you, for joining us uh, this evening. Pratt, if I could uh, perhaps uh, start with you. You briefly kind of uh, you know, set the context about this conference, two-day event. What's the big takeaway? What are you hoping for at the end of tomorrow? Well, Ron, uh, when you look across the globe, we are not only looking at markets that, where you can sell our products, but also looking for places where we can, have, we can find sources of competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And India is one of those places across the world where we think we can find tremendous competitiveness. So that's why we're here. You know, as you said, we kicked off the first edition of Supply Conference in 2015. Uh, since then, we have tripled our sourcing in India. Uh, we really hit the stride in terms of uh, finding partners who can deliver at world-class quality, partners who are embedded in our global supply chain. That stride has reached an inflection point today mm -hmm. where we feel that we can scale it up significantly. So we thought this is the time for us to bring our supply partners together to have a conversation, to have a conversation about not only our strategy and how we're going to take it forward, but also reflect on the journey we have come mm -hmm. for the last three, two and a half years. To reflect on what are the lessons learned. You saw some of that in Ashwini's slides. Yeah. Because that continuous learning makes us better, makes India even more competitive. And you hear very often, you know, how do you create an ecosystem mm -hmm. for aerospace and defense manufacturing in India? We are germinating that right here in this room. Absolutely. So, so that's why we're here to really kind of hit the inflection point and really take off from the knee and take off to the future where India truly becomes an integral part of the global aerospace and defense supply chain. Well, that's a great uh, statement to start uh, the proceedings, Pratt. There are over 100 suppliers, I'm told, in this room. Jeanette, let me uh, turn to you now because uh, Boeing is known for its complex, multi-layered, multi-tiered supply chain. It's become part of several case studies around the world. So tell me a little bit about the global vision. I mean, how do you see the global supply chain for Boeing at this point in time? And where does India fit in to that? Well, I don't know if there's anything more complicated than cricket. <laughs> okay, so we'll have to talk about that a little bit later. But in, our Boeing global supply chain is extensive, as you, you, you have already stated. And India plays a vital role in our global ecosystem. And I think most important for me, and I've only had the privilege of visiting many of your factories a couple of times to this country, and I think there's a great amount of talent. Uh, but your vital role is really because of the potential that we see in this country. You know, Boeing today, when you think about our businesses, our businesses are extensive. They expand through the commercial air, aircraft as well as defense and our services. And I, you know, we certainly thank you for your partnership, but when I walk through the factories and I see your people and the strategy that you have so clearly laid out, make in India, upskill, and also to uh, you know, design and start up mm -hmm. in India, I think you've laid out a very clear strategy for the country. And, and Boeing uh, believes in you and your potential and I've seen it uh, throughout the years as we've partnered through various uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And I think there, there's more potential going forward. So a vital partner in our global ecosystem. Vital partner in the global ecosystem. You mentioned the defense business also. I was speaking to somebody in Boeing, and they mentioned that uh, in the last eight, nine years, the overall business side has grown up to $12, $13 billion for Boeing. And that's, you know, that's a remarkable growth. But before I go back to Pratt, uh, you know, Jeanette, uh, you know, considering that it's, you know, your supply chain, you're sourcing from over 100 countries uh, around the world, it would, it would also uh, sort of work because as part of your hedging strategy, right, because you want to sort of, you know, diversify your, your risks so that if there is any issue in one country, you have other countries to fill up that. So talk to me about the strategic rationale behind this massive diversification of sourcing. 
Well, certainly, I, you know, as, as we've been throughout uh, the world, and, and I'd like to thank my team for being here today, I think uh, having as many Boeing people here in the room today, hopefully for all of you as potential suppliers, displays our sense of commitment to the potential that's here in the country. And so I think that, uh, you know, the Boeing Company, um, we find that the collaboration, the innovation can lead to accelerating further uh, potential suppliers. And uh, I've given several mm -hmm. presentations where I've talked about diversity of our supply chain, the diversity of thought. And for here in this country in particular, with your growth, your innovation and technology, I think there is a potential to really quite, not just innovate in terms of uh, product, but innovate in terms of the ecosystem that builds the product. And what I mean by that is our advanced manufacturing. Yeah. And we've spoke of this a little bit earlier about what does advanced manufacturing actually mean? And clarifying that uh, with each other, mm -hmm. I think is critical. So it's not just about the machine or the equipment. It's how we build it together, the digital layer, the sensoring technology, mm -hmm that's uh, currently being installed. I think when we talk about advanced manufacturing, it's no longer just automation. It's no longer just modul modularization or even our digital engineering. It's really how do we pull all of that together and have a single thread end to end in our supply chain into our factories. So that is the definition of the future in, in terms of advanced manufacturing. And I think that uh, India certainly certainly has the potential to play a key role in that. You've articulated that very clearly because advanced manufacturing could mean different things to different people. So I think you've Good. brought everybody on the same chain. But Brett, let's come to you. you know, you've got so many now partners in India. Of course, with Tata, as your business is more entrenched. You have a joint venture company with them. You're working with Bharat Forge, Hindustan Aeronautics. How, is, how has the evolution been? Well, and it's, it's been really a great uh, journey. Uh, we started. Uh, dipping our toe in the water almost a decade ago. We started with HAL uh, making doors for 757. But it was at a low burn rate. We really really sped up our, our involvement and accelerated this really in the last three to four years. You know, so if you look at it, last four years, we have quadrupled our source in India. So you can see yeah. the acceleration happening then. And really, uh, the driving force behind that is readiness of uh, industrial base in India. This base has invested quite a bit in the capabilities. They have worked with us to really find the specific skills for aerospace manufacturing. A lot of the companies in this room are very successful in automotive domain, right? On, as you know, automotive, uh, the gold standard is Six Sigma, which by definition accepts few defects for a few parts per million, right? So there is a little bit of a uh, journey to make from automotive aerospace. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like a, a you know, small step from automotive to aerospace, but actually it's a giant leap. It's a giant leap, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it requires a huge amount of uh, cultural transformation. Mm -hmm. you know, it requires capabilities in systems, you know, quality investments in skilling the frontline workforce on, about quality to get to zero defect. And that investment this base has made, and that has allowed them to earn our business, right? There's no free lunch in the world, right? They have demonstrated the capability. They delivered quality, cost, on-time delivery. And because of that, we have this you know, confidence of uh, uh, Jeanette and the supply chain team to place more work. In a sense, you've preempted my question because uh, you know, traditionally the aerospace has been the domain of the public sector enterprises. It's only more recently that private sector has opened up and they've had to make this massive transformation from being suppliers to automobile companies now to, you know, to, to advanced defense, advanced manufacturing. So talk to me a little about this. When you speak with them, how do you think that they manage to sort of transform, and especially with the fact that there is zero tolerance for defects? How do you think, when you speak with them, what, what do you take out of them? How have they managed to sort of you know, position themselves in a way in which that they're able to bring down their defects to, to zero? Right, I think it really gets back to uh, the immense appetite for learning, right? So. Uh, 
it's, it's an acquired skill. Going from Six Sigma to zero defect manufacturing is really about your process, systems, technology, and culture. So they have worked on that systematically, and they have really co-opted our supply chain experts and subject matter experts part of the journey. So as Ashri showed some slides, you know, we have invested quite a bit in skill development. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, our partners, our supplier partners, have invested in that by opening their shop floor. Because you, can't, you can only do as much in classrooms. A lot of the skill development actually happens in the shop floor. Right. So they have co-invested in that. They have invested in people's uh, skills development in terms of specific skills. How do you get to zero defect? You know, the journey has not been painless. It, is, it, it has gone through a few bumps. But finally, we hit a stride where we feel that they got the basic DNA right. for what it takes to be uh, an aerospace supplier. And I would, I would add one more thing. You know, it's not just about public mm -hmm. uh, and, and private. It's both. In our supply chain, we have private you know, companies who are in the room. We have public companies who are in the room. Right. So we really think that to optimize, to deliver the maximum outcome for India, we got to be both public and private. It's not either or, it's both.